Who here has been stressed at least once in their life? <laughs> stressed, like had a little bit of stress in their life. I'm going to say everyone. And when we're stressed, we tend to breathe up here, very shallow breaths. And what that does is signal to our nervous system we're in trouble. Something's going on, she's stressed out, Oop, fight or flight. And fight or flight is beneficial. We need that to run away from the saber-toothed tiger, to even play and have fun and get things done. But we also need rest and digest. And the ability of our nervous system to go from sympathetic is the fight or flight. I call it sympathetic because it cares that you don't get eaten by the lion, so you better run. So that's the sympathetic. And then the parasympathetic is what runs under that. And that controls digestion rest, calming of the nervous system. And if we're constantly in fight or flight, then we're having cortisol and other stress hormones released in our system and it has just a cascading effect. And it's interesting, I was speaking to a yoga teacher yesterday that I mentor and she said it's really been beautiful. She's just been teaching now maybe a year and where she teaches sometimes not a lot of people come. So she goes, I've had a lot of just one-on-one -on -one sessions with people and she worked with a woman who was in her 40s and after class she started crying she goes I don't think I have ever taken a full breath in my life <laughs> you know where you're really because a lot of us live and especially if we, we've experienced trauma who here has experienced trauma I'm gonna say birth is traumatic so there we go so it's remembering and reminding and you can actually train your nervous system to calm down and to get into that rest or digest. Do you want to know how? Yes. Yay! The breath is the quickest way to the nervous system. So lengthening exhale is going to help the nervous system always. But I want to show something to you just to do a little experiment. Okay? So where you are, sit up tall. If you trust me, close your eyes. <laughs> and you don't have to. And then just take a moment to notice how you're feeling. If you sense your heartbeat, your breath rate, do you feel stressed or calm? Just take that little litmus test of how you're doing. And then start to equalize your breath, not pushing it to extremes. Say you take a two or three second inhale, equalize the exhale. Do that for a few rounds. and then continue with the breath. Place your left hand on your heart or near your heart. Continue with that slow equalized breath and bring up the feeling of love. Love for anything, love for love's sake. And when you're ready you can relax your arm and notice if that had an effect on you. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Did anyone sense anything? Yeah, euphoria. Euphoria? <laughs> Nap time. Good. Nap time. Can you say that louder and into the microphone? I love the euphoria. Yeah, I could even sense the energy shift in the room. It just kind of went and it's a medical, that was created by medical doctors to bring your heart into coherence. And coherence is the medical term that means your ability for, to switch in and out of the autonomic, the autonomic nervous system to switch in and out of parasympathetic and sympathetic. So that's a very easy tool. Equalize your breath just for, it doesn't take long, right? Mm -hmm. Just for a few, five, six breaths. Place your hand on your heart, keep breathing. Bring up the feeling of love. I used to say unconditional love, but for some people that's a trigger. And then I used to say bring up the feeling of your dog, because that's what gets me. So that's a little bit how we can control the nervous system aspect of our breath. Because I can imagine when you're short of breath, it's a little alarming. Wouldn't you agree? And then the other thing that I really want to, I'm probably preaching to the choir here. If you're having trouble breathing, are you going to try and really increase your inhale. Has anyone tried that? Yeah. What trying to really like 
say you're like, damn it, today I'm going to increase my inhale and you just make yourself, it's a good way to have a panic attack. It's a good way to go into distress. It can, it can trigger the lungs. The best way to strengthen the lungs, regardless of if your issue is inhale or exhale, because some people have trouble with one or the other, lengthening the exhale. That strengthens the alveoli sacs and that will help everyone. And by, by doing that, you could, I was lucky, I had a teacher who grew up in India and developed COPD at a very young age. So he made it, he lives here now, but he made it his life's mission to work with people with lung issues. And I happened to end up in a classroom with him. And he's very passionate about it. And to know someone who's walked that, who can say from experience, I trust everything he tells me, you know, because he's walked that path. And what he calls it, to just simplify it, smell the rose, flicker the candle. So not like it's your birthday and you're trying to blow it out, but you're just trying to flicker the candle through pursed lips to elongate the exhale. And as you do that, pulling in the belly will help compress the abdomen and help push the air out a little bit more. So let's try that for a few rounds where you're gonna, we're gonna pretend we have, this is a beautiful flower. You're gonna inhale and smell the flower and then flicker the candle through pursed lips And at the end of that exhale, pull your belly in a little. Then let the inhale happen. Smell that rose, flicker the candle. Can you sense that? That even, I feel a little, little calm down from that. So that's going to be my homework challenge for you, to smell roses and flicker candles. Just periodically throughout the day. This isn't something like you're going to do an hour of I'm working on my breath. This is something that's your life. So you're going to take these yoga snacks throughout your day, throughout your life.